Welcome back! Carl, where are we? <laughs> we had a set built. It's beautiful. There's a neon sign. There's foam. There's less echo. It's great. Absolutely amazing. We also have huge news because a huge name will be joining us next week. Future MPL member and set champion Arne Huschenbett will battle against us next week in the Card Market Coliseum. So, for that match, please leave your modern deck list below in the comments, and Arne and us will pick our deck list from there for next week. Also, while you're down there, please like, subscribe, especially subscribe. We're so close to 10K, it hurts. They already know they're supposed to subscribe, so let's get into the games now. So last week's comments really wanted us to play some spiky decks against each other, tier one against tier one, and that means Hammer Time against Merc Time. I picked Hammer Time, Let's see how it goes. So, Yamin picked Hammer Time, and I was like, great, I get to play Blue Red Merc Tide. It's one of the best decks in Modern. It's awesome Blue Red Tempo. So, I turned around to our channel's very own Harry MTG, who is a masterclass player on Blue Red Merc Tide, and I asked him for a deck list and some tips in the matchup. And he told me he's never won this matchup before. So, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> this is not looking good for us, but at least the deck he gave me is very tuned for this meta that is full of Hammer Time and has some main board interaction against it already. But for those who don't know what the deck does, it's basically the best blue and red beaters in the format. A lot of graveyard interaction and paired up with some of the best removal, some of the best counter magic, and just card draw engines. Let's see how it goes. The deck is centered around the equipment Colossus Hammer, which gives plus 10 plus 10 but it has an unreasonably high equip cost at 8 mana. Fortunately, we can cheat that equip cost by playing either a Pure Steel Paladin or a Sigarda's 8. So that's the basic concept of the deck. Now we only need good creatures to carry the equipment. For example, Ink Moth Nexus. Really good one because a single swing is lethal and it's not even a creature when it's not animated. Also, Ornithopter and Memnite are really cheap beaters that can come into play early. I don't really have a way to tutor out a way to cheaply equip the hammer. I do, however, have a lot of tutors for the hammer itself. Urza Saga I play for, I play for Stoneforge Mystic, and I even play Steel Shaper's Gift. I've got a life hack for you guys. Uh, this deck, usually if you buy it online on other websites with the shipping, is about 1,820 euro. But using the Shopping Wizard cheap at first on card market in Central Europe, you can get it for as low as 1,040. That's 800 euro save. So on the internet, on various websites, my deck usually costs around 960 euros, so about a thousand euros. But if you use the shopping wizard on Cart Market and adjust some shippings, you can get it down to as low as 570 euros. That's a bargain. Are you ready? I am ready. Yeah, I think this is the most professionally lit I've ever been. Uh, I think so too. All Actually, right. maybe some some other interviews at Pro Tours or something, but. I've never been lit by a card market shaped sign. Never <laughs> so before. Nice. <laughs> yeah, neon too. Uh, so I won the die roll. You did. So I go first. Yeah, this is a keep. Yeah, a keep for me as well. My starting hand might be a bit slow, but between Urza Saga, Stoneforge Mystic, and Pure Steel Paladin, I have the combo and a way to grind Carl out of the game. We're not super happy about having Merc Tide Regent in this hand because you usually want to draw it later after you have more spells in your graveyard as a late time closer of the game. But we have our two best early beaters and we have a Braid, which is our saving grace against Hammer Time. So we're going to keep it, hopefully play the Channeler, maybe start attacking, start putting cards in our graveyard. So I will start with a very scary turn one. Um, Regvan Nimble Penver. That's the scariest turn one you can have. It's also the scariest monkey in Magic the Gathering. It is. Oh no, there's Gorilla Shaman. True. That's the, uh, There's multiple gorillas. Yeah. Turn one Ragavan? That is actually frightening, and I'm afraid that might run away with the game if Carl just removes my blockers. Okay, pass the turn. All right, I'll draw. So here I either play the Urza Saga on turn one to get to the final chapter as quickly as possible, or I play the planes to maximize the amount of tokens I can get out of the Urza Saga. I guess I'll play a planes and a spring -like drum. I'll go with the planes here, because the Urza Saga tokens are really valuable. I'll keep this Ornithopter in hand for now. Not only does it not allow Carl to remove it with a burn spell, but it also might trigger an ingenious smith later on. Oh, that's it? That's it. Oh, no blockers for Raggy! I'll take my turn. You'll take your turn. I'll draw. I'll be really happy about my draw. I'll declare attacks. Sure. I'll swing in for two. I'll take two. Oh, first blood. 18. 18. 
Um, you'll reveal the top card of your library. I will make a treasure. Don't mind if I do. Well, this is an awful coincidence. It costs zero. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> I can play this. I will play your Ornithopter. Sure. That's that's a good turn of events. I'm going to play the Scalding Tarn and a Dragon's Rage Channeler. That's three creatures, although that, one of them is fairly useless. One of them is <laughs> yours. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's useful for intimidation and embarrassment purposes. I'm going to pass the turn over to you. All right, I'll untap, and I will take a draw. I'm feeling very cozy with my four, six permanents on the board and your one uh, spring leaf drum. I think you're allowed to feel cozy with six permanents on the board. I don't run out the paladin here because that's the kind of all or nothing play I want to avoid. Instead, I take it slow with the Urza Saga. I'll play an Urza Saga. Oh, that's still a good one. It is a very good one. And I'll follow it up with a Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh, that's also a good one. It's also a good one. I'll get a Colossus Hammer. B big surprise. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. B big surprise I don't even there. think you have any other equipment. So I don't think you had a choice. Oh, maybe, maybe you maybe you don't. Don't tell me. I won't. Cast an Ornithopter. Oh, seems easy. And it's your turn afterwards. I will fetch with the Scalding Time. Sure. Taking one. Getting a Steam Vents. All right. Um, I'll untap. Yep. I'll keep draw. So attacking with the Ragavan here is a little bit weird, but it's kind of both upside. If Yamin doesn't block, I hit for two. I get a treasure token, that's good. But our hand doesn't have a lot going on right now. So if he does block it, it's a removal spell and it's an extra target for Delirium in my graveyard. So it's all upside. I'll declare attacks. Okay. Swing in with Ragavan. I'll block. Happens. Happens. Stoneforge Mystic trading for Ragavan seems like a great deal from my perspective. If he just killed that Stoneforge Mystic, the Ragavan could have connected another time. I'll play Missy Rainforest. Sure. Pass the turn over to you. I will untap. And I will take a draw. And then this Urza Saga will go up to two. Yep. As it does. And I'll follow it up with the Sunbaked Canyon. As one does. And I will follow that up with a Memnite. Ooh, all the artifacts. And then I will pass the turn. Okay, I will fetch. Down to 18. Get another Steam Vents. Sure. Tapped. So I'm only taking one. I will untap. Draw for turn. Sure. That is what we dearly needed. Oh no. Uh, I'll cast a Thought Scar. Ugh. Triggering my general, dr triggering my Dragon's Rage Channeler. Sure. There's a reason people call it Darcy. I don't like Darcy. She just doesn't look like a Darcy. Um, so, triggering. I mean, I'll be putting it in my graveyard anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking about this. That card will probably uh, end up in your graveyard. I'll mill myself for two. My removal! A lot of unholy heats A there. lot of unholy heats and bolts. And then I'll draw a card. I still don't have Delirium. That's unlucky. I'll play a second Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. And an island. Five cards. Four cards. Four cards. I'll pass the turn. All right, at end of turn, I'll pay one to the Sunbaked Canyon, mm -hmm. go down to 17, and create a Construct Token. Those are good. Those are good. It's currently a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. So I'll go into my turn. Mm -hmm. I'll untap. I will take a draw, and then this goes up to three, but before yep. it Actually, uh, the, the ability resolves. I will make another construct. Make another construct. Paying, paying one life. I guess I will pay one life. Okay. So I'll go down to sixteen, creating another construct, and then I'll go search for an artifact. Yes. Convert mana cost one or zero. It's really tough here to know what Yamin gets. If he gets a hammer, 
I can just blow him out. If he gets a welding jar, I'd be better off killing two of his creatures right here before it comes out. But I think he'd just go for the hammer. So let's hold. So I'm kind of short on threats because I can't really equip hammer multiple times. So I'll get a welding jar here to protect my construct and my construct only. I don't mind if a hammer gets killed. All right, uh, I will get a welding jar. Oh no, Jan and Kauf. I like my welding jar. I have made a mistake. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure you like your welding jar. I don't like your welding jar. There's two things I don't like. Um, coconut water and my spells not <laughs> fizzling. I see. Um, this even has the shape of a coconut, so like... <laughs> it's just there to spite me. In the meantime, this land goes to the graveyard, yeah. unfortunately. What it's, a bad land. It's done land. its work. <laughs> what a terrible <laughs> what a, land. What a bad land. <laughs> this is a person who has two six sixes and a welding jar in play. And then I will uh, tap my springleaf drum together with the Memnite mm -hmm. to get out a Colossus Hammer, Ooh, which you yep. already knew about. And then it might be time to hit the red zone with a 7-7 seven, seven artifact, construct token. That's huge. That is huge. Before blockers, sure. I'm going to go ahead and attack, attempt to abrade your construct. I think Yemen has taken this route because he can't equip the hammer after it's off of a creature. So I think the best way of racing him here is just getting rid of the combo piece and racing him with a huge Merktide. So you get two triggers? Two triggers. Trigger number one. Yeah, I just... N nothing at all? No, uh, nothing at all. I would like to regenerate that construct token. That makes a lot of sense. All right, this was a short welding jar. I didn't expect an abrade, but this is what I had it for, to protect the construct. Go ahead. All right. And we'll untap. Sure, draw. Yeah. I'll play an engineered explosives for zero. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, Carl. Oh man, that was that, that was such a good draw. If I knew there would be game one engineered explosives, I might have considered getting a pithing needle last turn with the Urza Saga. Trigger, trigger. <laughs> um, oh man, all... This deck is like the Rolling Stones. It's just giving me hit after all, hit. All bangers. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm still gonna... Both Delirium Triggers keep on the top of my library. I'm going to blow this up. Yep. Give you your Ornithopter. Returns to Valhalla. Died in combat. Uh, these uh, now have Delirium. Sure. Swing for six. Take six. Down to ten. Down to ten. I'm going to exile these five cards. Yep. Including one, two, three, four um, instant sorceries. All right. To cast a Merktide region. Yep. With four counters. So it's currently a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Sure. I'll pass the turn over to you. All right, I'll untap. I'll take a draw. And that's game one. Let's go to game two. Is it, actually? I, I can't do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right, game two. Before we get into game two, we could not, not thank Karma Crow because without them, there would be none of these videos because they lend us all of our cards. Seriously, we went to them. We said, we need four Ragavan alongside all the other 150 cards we needed. Four Ragavan? They, they were like, here, have four Ragavan. Easy. It's incredible. They have a huge stock of an in inventory. So like any cards you could need, you just go there, you buy them from them and they will ship them out to you within three days usually. So. We thank Camera Crow, but now, time to get into game two. Our sideboard has 10 cards we're bringing in. This is not a good matchup. Yaman attacks from all sorts of angles. So we're gonna bring in interaction in the form of a braid and two force of negation. We're also bringing out some board sweeps to try to reset the board and buy us some time. That's in the form of a Kozilex return or two extra engineered explosives. And the risky extra side is we're gonna try to turn into kind of a lock deck. If we can prevent him from attacking us from all angles and only have one going forward, we can bring in two Blood Moon, which will prevent all of his land shenanigans, all of the creatures we usually have trouble getting rid of, 
and we can bring in Chalice of the Void to prevent his one drops from coming in. Now, we play a lot of one drops, that's true, but if we prevent his lands from getting the hammer and the one drops from being cast the hammer, we can probably just beat him fairly. We need the combination of both. It's true that we play a lot of one drops, we're bringing out all of our Ragavans because they can't be cast if there's a Chalice and a lot of his creatures can just block them early pretty easily. We're also bringing out three Serum Vishes because there are one drops and we're kind of slow. And finally, we have to bring out three Counter Spell because he can usually just get his hammer with the Nurse's Saga. He can cast a bunch of instant speed stuff and we're not really happy about keeping mana up all the time, especially when we want removal. I bring in Relic of Progenitus against Dragon's Rage Chandler and Murktide Regent, and the Prismatic Ending is kind of a catch-all against the cheap threats, as well as random sideboard hate permanents. Carl? Yes? I've got a confession to make. Oh no. I've got a companion in my sideboard. There, oh. There's a Lurus hiding out. <laughs> this a is, huge confession. Yeah, this, this is the twist in our telenovela. <laughs> okay. Let's go. I, I know Loris is there. All right, let's go. I'll go first in game two, Carl. That I, I gotta makes say. a lot of sense. No die rolls in game two. Are yeah. you happy with your hand? I am very happy with my hand. This hand kind of looks like my first one with both the combo and an Urza Saga, but it also has a Relic of Progenitus, so I really like my chances once again. You know what? I'm happy with mine. This hand's a little risky on mana, but if we remove the first creature we see with the Unholy Heat and then just put a Chalice on one, we can usually probably get rid of any zero mana creatures or two mana creatures with the Engineered Explosives. I think it's slow, but it takes care of a lot of angles and then we can just draw our way out of this. <laughs> All right, let's get off to the races, Carl. Good thing I brought my running shoes. You're gonna need them because this race is a quick one. I'm gonna oh, no. start out with the planes. Okay. Cast a relic of progenitus. <sighs> Dude. You don't have a graveyard. I I will. <laughs> All right. That's why I came here to make a graveyard. Go ahead. Um I guess I'll be killing time to fill that graveyard now that you've got that there. I'm going to play a spire bluff canal and pass the turn over to you. Alright. I'll on top. I'll take a draw. Same thing as last game, this one even more so than before. With all of Carl's removal, I want to take it slow and maximize the amount of tokens I get out of an Urza Saga. Since I'm going to be playing Chalice on turn one anyways, we're just going to burn the Unholy Heat on whatever he plays here. I will play an Urza Saga. Not again! Not again! Uh, I very much like it to be back. Well, and then I'll follow it up with another known one. It's the Stoneforge Mystic. It is the Stoneforge Mystic. Getting a Colossus Hammer. <sighs> Stop. Hammer time. Da -na -na -na. Da -na. Da -na. Can't touch this. Okay. It's uh, very hard for me to pronounce can't touch this quickly. Like, it's just a weird combination of can't touch, can't touch this. this. It's yeah, there's hard. all the different ways of using your T's in English. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Very hard. It is a mouthful. Go ahead. I will unholy heat your. It's in German. Uh, apparently, Speaking you can mouthful. touch this. I can, uh, <laughs> can touch this. But I can also touch your graveyard. Yep. Go ahead. I'll untap. I'll draw for turn. I will cast an island, play it, and put Chalice on one. All right. The levity with which you took this worries me a lot. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You're supposed to be going, oh no! <laughs> um, I, I don't see a problem with this. I like this Chalice on one, actually. I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, pass. I'll untap. I'll take a draw. And Urza Saga will go up to two. And because Urza Saga sits very prettily on that too, I'll play an Ink Moth Nexus and pass the turn. I don't like those. I, I do like the Ink Moth Nexus. Next eye. Next eye. Is it Next eye or Nexus is? Um, I don't know. Let's call it Greek Teacher. I will untap draw for turn. Sure. This makes Hammer Time lethal. This is so I, worrisome. Yes! I. I I have no break, no time to catch a breath. <laughs> Isn't it great? No, it's not. <laughs> it's the opposite of great. I'm gonna cast uh, a Fiery Islet. Okay. And pass serve. Oh, that landed the wrong way. All right, it's a <laughs> yeah. construct. Yeah. It's getting yeah, into play. You, you, you do that. May I untap? You may untap. All right. So I'll untap. I will take a draw. And I will... Take this Urza Saga up to three, but before that ability resolves, I'll create another construct. That makes sense. Number two. So now that ability resolves. Yes. 
May I go search my library? You may. I may! So Urza Saga can just get a hammer here because Chalice of the Void prevents me from casting them, but Urza Saga just sneaks them right into play. It's hammer time. It is! Moving along in my turn, I okay. will play another planes, mm -hmm. and I'd like to move into the blue zone. It goes into the blue zone. It's the I will say light blue zone. The light blue zone. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to the regular blue zone. Yeah. It's currently four. Would you like to do anything? No, I would not like to do anything. I will take four. All right. 16. Pass the turn. So our plan didn't pay off. He went for construct creation instead of beat down with the ink moth nexus. So we're just going to take our losses. Player engineer explosives on one to protect us from a hammer and try to get rid of his creatures otherwise. I will pay island and island All right. to cast engineered explosives for one. I'm paying two to go around the chalice of the void, but it's too blue so that the sunburst does one. It's not only I, sunbursting, I, I it's look, also my brain bursting. I look clever, but you're the one who told me this earlier. <laughs> um, so thank you. And I will. Pass the turn over to you. Uh, another engineered explosives. I guess I will have to keep up one mana at all times now to crack the relic to draw the card. All right, I'll untap and I will take a draw. And then I will cast an ingenious smith. Oh, that's a new one. That's a new one from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. When it enters the battlefield, I may reveal an artifact among the top four cards of my library and put that one into my hand. And okay. whenever an one or more artifacts enter the battlefield on my control. I put a plus one, plus one counter on the smith, but only Ooh. once each turn. So this enters the battlefield. It does. I take a look at the top four cards of my library. And very luckily, I will find a Springleaf Drum. Well, that's not what you were looking that, to that, get. That's not exactly that what I was. also has <laughs> one CMC. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, then I would like to move into combat. Yes, you would. And I'll swing for eight. I mean, I wouldn't have come to the Coliseum if I couldn't take punches. I'll go down to eight. All right, down to eight. I like it. Go ahead. Let's get things rolling. I will go down to seven. And crack the engineer explosives. In response. So th you've sacrificed this. Yeah, sacrifice it. Okay. Sacrifice it, and in response, I will uh, sacrifice the relic of Progenitus to exile all of our graveyards. So then I will draw a card, and you may proceed. Okay. Uh, this dies. This dies as well. Oh, oh that's the namesake card of your deck. I don't have a lot of life. You don't have a lot of life. Seven might be considered a lot by some, but not by many. <laughs> um, I'll play a top steam vents and pass the turn. That's not a lot of action there. That is oh. not a lot of action. Compared to your... Oh. I would like to move to combat. Considering that I'm seven, that's, that's a good move. <laughs> um, yeah, go to combat. Swing with all of these three. All, all of them. I would like to, before blocks, deal two damage to every creature. All right, sure. Uh, then I would like to Prismatic end that Chalice of the Void. So Prismatic Ending can take out Chalice of the Void at any time because I don't have to cast it for one. I can just pay extra for X and avoid yeah. the trigger. All right. That resolves. It exiles, right? Yeah, it exiles. I was kind of relying on that. And I'll follow it up with a Sigarda's Aid. And I'll pay one life, going down to oh, 19. Danger! 19. 19 to cast a Springleaf Drum. Okay. Then it's your turn. I will take one, go down to six to Thought Scarab myself. Sure. I will mill myself for two. Oh, the other shot. I mean, that's no, the, uh, the harm's already done. I'll draw for my Thought Scarab. Sure. 
My go? Sure. I'll end tap. Yep. Drop your turn. I will cast the three Stooges. Okay. Look at the top three cards. I mean, this is obvious. Um, so one of these will go to the bottom of my library. Sure. One of these will go exiled until end of turn. Okay. I may cast it, and one of these goes to my hand. Sure. This goes here. You don't currently have any creatures, so I'm just gonna bolt you. 16. 16. Play a fiery eyelet, and take another one. Yeah. Five. To exile one, two, three, four, five. Instant sorceries from my graveyard. Sure. And guess a very large regent. It's a very large regent. Um, it's a eight, eight. Sure. Ten tens are bigger than eight. eight. They are. I'll pass the turn over to you. All right. I will untap. Mm -hmm. And I will take my draw. So in this case, Carl has a blocker and is probably holding up a one mana removal spell. With that being given, I have to cast Esper Sentinel instead of the Pure Steel Paladin because both let me draw a card, Esper Sentinel because of the non-creature spell that Carl casts, and Pure Steel Paladin because of an equipment that enters the battlefield. But Esper Sentinel is one mana cheaper, which lets me hold up the second hammer, which is very important to keep my Nexus alive and kill the Merktide regions on Carl's side of the board. I will cast an Esper Sentinel. Oh, those those are pretty good against me. I have a lot of mana, but I currently but have right one now. open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and I will... Um... So many spells that my Chalice of the Void was just sitting there pretty good, protecting me against. Yeah. This um, is infuriating. I will use the Springleaf Drum mm -hmm. to animate my Ink Moth Nexus. Yes. And then I would like to move to combat. Yes. Attack you. Um, I will block. I'll cast a Colossus Hammer. Colossus Hammer on the stack. I will attempt to lightning bolt your. Uh, you're gonna pay. You're gonna what draw one. Do you like to pay one? No, I cannot. Even <laughs> if I wanted to, I would love to. I'll draw a card. Um, in response, I'll pay one life. Go down to fifty. Do you have another Colossus Hammer? I do. Uh, all right, any responses? No, I'm tapped out. Oh, all right. Uh, well, in that I have case, one card. Colossus Hammer gets attached to the Inkmoth Nexus, so yes. it's now an 11 11. Mm -hmm. uh, then it gets dealt three damage. Okay, um, down to eight toughness. And unfortunately, this is an 8 8, so I have to attach the second hammer <laughs> to the Inkmoth Nexus as well, otherwise, I would have liked the Sentinel. But anyway, so this is now 21 21. How does your 8-8 fare against that? Very poorly. Very poorly? Um, it's gone. It's just thought. Well, in that case, I will pass the turn. Um, I'm going to untap. Sure. Draw for turn. Yep. Sacrifice a Fiery Islet. Fiery Islet. Sure. Draw. Yep. Here's to hoping none of those three cards is a pure steel pellet. Blood Moon? Blood Moon. Yep. All right. Yeah. Play a mountain? Yeah. Pass the turn. So we had to make sure that the ink moths weren't a problem anymore, but he still has two snow covered planes. So let's just really hope that none of the cards in his hand are pure stair paladin. No pure stair. And I will take a draw. <laughs> I'll, I'll cast a pure stair paladin. Was that your draw? It, it was, but I also had two additional ones in hand. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, that was an over a bit. Okay, hit me, do yeah, it. Yeah, I'll equip both of those hammers and hit you for 21. That's way more than five. It uh, is. Next game. Next game. On second thought, I decide to take out the Shadow Spear for a Seal of Cleansing. In game one, Shadow Spear can come in clutch when it comes down to a race between aggressive creatures and construct, but post sideboard, Carl's deck becomes a lot more controlling, so the race just doesn't matter that much. Do you want to go first? I would love to go first. All right, all okay, on. for all the marbles, one, one. How many, how many marbles do you own? Maybe like seven? I don't think I own any, actually. Yamen, this is not <laughs> easy. Yamen, kauf. Um, ah, darn it. I, you know who wants to be a millionaire, how they can have a lifeline? I wish I could call Harry right now. Um, I 
It's all or nothing. It's all or we'll nothing. We'll go for it. This is, You'll this keep. is kind of risky. Um, because I don't have the third land and the hand is slow and clunky. But if I play the Chalice of the Void on one, on turn two, and then steal a creature with the Archmage's Charm, if I draw a blue source, I can then shut down all of his lands uh, with Blood Moon and then still have the Chalice on one, slowly regain from there, have a braid up. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I just really need to draw a land. Uh, I'll keep two. Okay. So this hand seems good. While it doesn't have a hammer itself, it does have Sigarda's aid. And we have so many ways to tutor out the hammer, but we don't have that many ways to cheaply attach the hammer, especially since the Paladin can get removed really easily by Karl. So I go first. You do. I'm gonna play a Fiery Islet and pass the turn. All right. I'll take my draw, I'll play Planes, and cast an Esper Sentinel. I know that there might be a Chalice of the Void coming on turn two, so I really have to consider which one of these cards I want to play. I decide to go with Esper Sentinel because resolving Sigarda's Eight itself is nice, but it's useless without another one cost spell, which is the hammer. So if there actually is a Chalice of the Void, Sigarda's Eight becomes useless without casting a hammer. Um, that's really good against <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead. I'll draw. Sure. And hope. This is, this is my big hurrah. You're gonna draw a card. I'm gonna take one, but I'll have a Chalice of the Void on one. Sure, so I take a draw. I go to 19. Uh, you take a draw because you don't pay I didn't one. pay for this yeah. yet. And I take one because of my Fiery Islet. Uh, hope your hand is seven one drops. All right, I'll untap, I'll take my draw. So I just drew two cards, one off the Esper Sentinel and one off my draw step, and both were great. Prismatic Ending and Urza Saga are like the best draws I could have had. Okay, Carl. So, okay. You casting this Chalice of the Void. Your deck is all one drops, Carl. How can you play this card <laughs> <laughs> profitably? Um, but, them decks? Okay. But, given you played this, I assume your hand is fine with the Chalice of the Void being in play. Or I might be a madman. <laughs> or you might be a madman. So what I will do, Carl, is I'll play an Urza Saga. Ugh. Painful. And I'll prismatic ending the Chalice of the Void. This is kind of an awkward turn because I don't really want to take out the Chalice because it really hinders Carl too. But then again, otherwise I would be stuck doing nothing and that kind of sucks too. All right. Actually, it hurts. I, that, ugh. Ugh. And then I'll attack you for one. Carl, that hurts way less. <laughs> This was this was a tough turn. Let me this tell you. Okay. <laughs> um. Go ahead. I will draw. I will play this island. I really need to cast a blood moon to just blow up the Urza Saga, but this is definitely my last chance to cast the charm. So I think I'm gonna charm whatever he plays or steal the Sentinel and then untap Blood Moon. I mean, Kapp, I'll pass the turn. You'll pass the turn, yep. okay. I am fine with that. I'll untap, I'll take my draw, and I will pick up Urza Saga to two. That's where the direction it goes. I'll play Nink Moth Nexus. Okay. I would like to declare attacks. You may. I'll attack for one. <coughs> oh, I'll take one. 17. And I'll pass the turn. This is the last time you're drawing an extra card, Yemen Cope. I'll take one. 16 to cast this. I would like to steal your Esper Sentinel. I guess that works, but you won't pay an extra one. No, yeah, I, I told you, this is the last time you're drawing a card off of me not casting my spells. There you go. Uh, Have fun with it. Treat it well. Actually, I'm hoping to chop block with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm at 16. Okay, I'll draw for turn. Sure. I will play a Blood Moon. Ooh. Um. You're down to 15, right? It's my last row. Yeah, I cast. I used one, so I'm 15. Yeah, that's rude. I'll I'll create a construct in response. Okay. And now this dies, now this as it dies. has no more counters. Uh, it does have counters. It's, it's, it's also still a saga, but it doesn't have any chapters. Ah, so, okay. And it gets sacrificed after the last chapter, and if it doesn't have any chapters, then well. I have an island, and well, now, three mountains. Three mountains. 
The same amount of Nexus. Is awesome it's a mountain, amount. equally. Um, I'll declare... No, yeah, well, I'll declare tax. No tax. Your turn, yeah. Pass the turn. All right, my turn. I'm, I'm all about it. I'll take my draw. I will... Cast an Ornithopter. Yep, that doesn't uh, cost anything. Yeah. I will play a snow-covered planes. I will declare attacks. All right. Attack for two. Any effects before damage, I will not be blocking. All right, 13. And then I will cast a Seal of Cleansing, paying one extra for that. Ah, uh, rude. Weird Sentinel you've got there. <laughs> and then I'll pass the turn. Untap. Draw. Just like Chalice of the Void, Blood Moon also is hurting Carl a lot, but I have to take it out to get a hammer off the Urza Saga. I'll play a mountain. I will cast a Prismatic Iteration. All right. Three knuckleheads again. I will put one at the bottom of my library. One will be exiled. I can cast it until end of turn. Okay. And one will go into my hand. Sure thing. I will play this Mishra's Bobble. That's a surprise, Carl. <laughs> That's not a permanent. And I will just look at the top card of your library. Sure. Go ahead. Take a peek. Close your eyes. I'm showing the people. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I will pass the turn. All right. I'll untap. I will draw for Misha's Bobble. Sure. I'll draw this mystery card that you just mm -hmm. revealed to everyone. Then I'd like to move to attacks. Yep. Attack for two. I'll take two. Down to 11. I'll cast a Cigar Desade. Oh. Pay, paying the additional one yeah, for yeah, the Esper yeah. Sentinel. Okay. And then I'll Seal of Cleansing the Blood Moon. Not kind, but it's fair. And then I'll play an Urza Saga. Ooh. Go ahead. I will crack a fiery eyelet. Sure. Drawing a card. I will untap. Yep. Draw for turn. I will start off by casting an expressive iteration again. You're truly expressing yourself. Iteratively. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that I don't think that's a I don't think that's a thing. Um Don't tell me there are good ones. I mean, they're good ones. They are good ones? They are good ones. I dislike that. I will put this one at the bottom of my library. I will be able to cast this one until end of turn. Okay. We'll go here. And I'll put this one into my hand. Sure. I will proceed to unholy heating your construct. Ah, you have delirium times a thousand, eh? Times a bajillion. I even have an enchantment. Why do I have an enchantment in my graveyard? I'm gonna play a bubble. Sure. Look at the top card of your library. Go ahead. You guys can see it again. My eyes are closed. Um. And pass the turn. I will untap. On your upkeep, I'll draw for the bubble. Sure. I'll take my draw. Yes. Drawing Stoneforge Mystic is amazing here. I can threaten lethal every turn. Threatening lethal is great because it forces Carl to keep up blockers and or removal, which is really awkward for him. But I can just keep playing my grindy games with the construct for as long as possible. I will proceed to play another Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, good. I will cast a Stoneforge Mystic. <gasps> yes. I'll grab myself... Yeah, but I'm nervous. Are you nervous? I'll grab myself a hammer. Yes. It's just a hammer, Carl. It's a really big hammer. She gets swords. She clearly gets swords. Yeah, nah. Like, what happened to her mold? It's her hammer sword. <laughs> Not a thing. Anyways, uh, go ahead. Your clemency disturbs me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will untap. Draw. Sure. So Garda's aid is gonna be a problem. Uh, but we drew an untapped land here, so I get to play Murktide Regent on two. 
and then keep out three removal spells and the Murktide is probably gonna be big enough to just negate any Construct Ebells now. I will exile these five cards from my graveyard. That's a lot of cards you exile from your graveyard. And four of those are instances of Sorceries of Note to be able to cast a Murktide Regent with Delve. Sure. It is a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And I'll pass the turn. All right, at end of turn, I will create another construct. Yeah. Back in the game. Back in the game. And then I'll move into my turn. Yes. I'll untap. I'll yeah, I'm nervous. You are nervous? I, I, I can relate. Now, uh, this Urza Saga will take up to three. Yes, what will you choose to do with it? It's about to die. Say your last goodbyes. It's hammer time. Thank you. I'll go ahead and find a Colossus Hammer, which might come as a surprise. Uh, so when that enters the battlefield, uh, the cigar does eight triggers. Yeah, that's so powerful that even when it's tutored, or even when it it's, it doesn't have to be cast. Um, and I'd like to attach it to the construct token that does not have summoning sickness. Okay, Bolt is not going to do much here. So the plan, I think, is to get rid of the abrade, block with the sentinel, hope it maybe draws me a card, we can move our way towards an engineered explosives, and then we keep the bolt up for any pure steel paladin, but at least we're biding time. Yes, so what would you like to equip it onto? I'd like to attach it to the construct without summoning sickness. That happens. All right, it is successfully equipped. I'll play a silent clearing. Yes. And I'll cast a welding jar. Would you like to pay one for that? Ha ha, Esper Sentinel. As for Sentinel, they're getting me good every time. I will pay one for that. Okay. And then I'd like to... move to combat. Yes. Swing with the construct. I would like to cast a braid on the Colossus Hammer. I would really like to keep this welding jar around to prevent some sort of mass removal like that engineered explosives in game one. However, I have to regenerate the hammer because otherwise Carl gets to take a very good block. I'd like to regenerate the Colossus hammer. Okay. I will block with the center. Sure. Did tell you. <laughs> it, it, it ends you, up. It's, its fate was foretold. It was. The game plan is still very simple here. Threaten lethal if Carl ever taps out, but otherwise play a grindy game. I guess I'll pass the turn. Okay. I'll untap. Sure. I'll draw. Yep. Carl, this smells a lot like an engineered explosive. I wish. <laughs> so badly. So badly. So you have another hammer in hand, so I have to find a way to block two creatures. Easy. I'm gonna fetch. Down to 10. Down to 10. 10. I think I have a third island because I'm playing Blood Moon. Oh, thank you, Harry. Harry MTG. Oh, yeah. Our very own. A mastermind. <laughs> I'll keep this in because you'll be very happy you said that. <laughs> are you continuously expressing your iterator iterations or something? No, my iterations are fully expressed. I will pay four plus three. Okay, chumping with two Merktide regions is not what you write home to your mom about, but I'm just trying to kind of find an out here, and I have the bolt up to get any pure steel paladin. To play another Merktide region, this one's a four four. All right. And let's just bide some time and play some catch until the engineer explosives arrive. Waiting for the cavalry. All right, so it's my turn? Yes, it is your turn. Uh, all right, at end of turn. Yes. I'd like to flash in another hammer. That was expected. That triggers Cigar Duzade, and I'd like to attach it to the Ornithopter. It loses flying. It loses flying. But it's a 10-2 now. It's a 10. 10-12. 10-2 would be kind of Oh, yeah, yeah, 10-2 would be awful. Yeah, you're right, 10-12, sorry. That's all what right. I meant. And then moving into my turn, I'll untap, and I'll take a draw. I'll cast an Ornithopter. That one's a 0-2. Two. 
And I will move to combat. Okay. With these three. This feels very embarrassing, Yamin. Um, hoping you don't have a third hammer, I'm gonna go ahead and chump the two, the two large Mario two? brothers over here. Sure, I will activate one Ink Moth Nexus. And then I'll activate the other Ink Moth To Nexus make this one bigger, yeah. As well. Uh, How so many artifacts does that leave with it's you? It's two, four, six, eight artifacts in play. So this would be for eight, I go down to two. You go down to two? I mean, when, when you're facing down two hammers, two, ten, basically the same thing. All right, and then I'll pay three and one life, going down to 19. All right, the first damage I deal you this game. To put Lurus into my hand. It's a good one. Go ahead. So even engineered explosives... Doesn't quite do the trick, Wouldn't eh? quite do the... I mean, it keeps you alive for one more trick turn. right now. I'm gonna catch an engineer as well as one zero. Carl! <laughs> In. This is not scripted. I promise you this is not scripted. Um, <laughs> That's some <absurd>. sort. <laughs> and then... I'll play, pay four, five, six, seven. How many Merktide regions are in your deck, Carl? Four. It's in the name of the oh, deck. Oh, I'll play yeah, another that, one, that but with sense. zero. So it's a three, three for four mana? It's not very good. <laughs> oh, Carl. I will keep the Blood Moon in my graveyard. Um, I'll pass the turn over to you. All right, I'll untap. Yes, you will. I'll take a draw. <laughs> it's hammer time. <laughs> I'll cast a Pure Stone Paladin. <sighs> w would you like to respond? I'll get a Kraken. All the zero mana in response. All the zero mana converted. Ornithop just blow up too. Yeah, that's true. So now. Much cleaner. There's a pure still paladin yes. on the board. I'll pay one life, going down to 18, to animate one of those ink moth. Can I respond to the cost of that? Yes, it's not yet the creature. I will respond to it activating and bolt the paladin. It is gone. Um, now, this is activated. Yes. I'd like to attack with these two creatures. I will block here. Surprise hammer! <laughs> <laughs> how many hammers do you have in your deck? Uh, how many hammers uh, do I have? Yeah, I'm, I'm very dead. Very Congratulations. Dead. Good, Good games. One, two, three hammers. Yam and Kalf, you don't need that many hammers. That's the name of the game and my deck. Yeah, I guess apparently you did. What we need on our side is next week for you guys to leave your comments for when we play against Alan and Hushinbeth. You submit a deck list, exact, or just the name of an archetype, and we'll play it. And while you're down there, please, we are so close to 10K, and a lot of you love uh, watching these are not subscribed. Please, if you just click that button, we can start doing two of these a week. Makes it a lot easier to justify that. But with that being said, we'll see you next week.